Hello internet people, happy Friday and welcome back to another edition of Hashtag Friday Sews. We meet again, it's another Friday, time for another video. How are we all doing? How was your sewing this week? What did you get done? Okay, what did I get done? Let's talk about what I got done. I'm gonna talk about what I got done and then I'm going to have a mid-year, well, a little bit past mid-year update on my Make 9. So if you're here for one and not the other, go ahead and use the chapters on the scroll bar at the bottom of this video to watch whatever part you wanna watch and don't watch whatever part you don't wanna watch. Okay, so what did I get done this week? This week I worked on my hashtag Sew My Birthday Dress, which is a challenge hosted by Michelle from Michelle Sews Again, and we've talked about it before, sewing something that is reminiscent of or a pattern from the year of your birth. I chose Simplicity 7481, which is a pattern from 1986. So I got started on actually sewing it this last weekend, and I'm about halfway done. Last week, I briefly talked about how I am absolutely amazed that so many people are able to get so much sewing done. And I really enjoyed reading everyone's comments about kind of your sewing schedule and how much sewing you get done. It seems like some people are in my boat, some people are not. But I really like hearing about how other people structure their lives and organize all of their things. It's like so interesting to me, so I enjoyed that. So I decided to kind of keep track of how much sewing I did this week. I only got to sewing twice this week, Saturday and Sunday. I sewed for four hours on Saturday, like straight. I didn't even come up for air, like I just sewed for four hours. And then after four hours, I got hungry and I was like, wait, what, it's been four hours? It was wild. Anyways, I sewed for four hours on Saturday and I sewed for about three and a half hours on Sunday, all working on that dress. And I'm only about halfway done. And the pattern is actually really easy, but I have some reflections about it. I'm definitely a slow sewer. I'm fine with that. That's fine. Uh, a few reasons why. Number one, I was filming while I was doing it, so that kind of takes up some extra time, like moving the camera around and like thinking about what you're trying to film. Um, aside from that, like my scene ripper and I are like best friends. Like we are joined at the hip. Like it's constantly in my hand. Like I'm ripping out things constantly. Like I probably waste so much thread <laughs> ripping things out. And that is because I'm a perfectionist, uh, too much of a perfectionist. Uh, when I was in sewing school, the margin of error was a 16th of an inch. You could not have anything beyond that like a seam had to be within a 16th of an inch of 5 8 or 3 8 or whatever we were doing everything had to be within a 16th of an inch and that has been ingrained in me and has stuck with me and now i'm ruined for life i'm ruined for life um but yeah i ripped out so much like i attached the side seams backwards so the pockets were not the right way so i had to take that out and i was redoing this and that and my seam wasn't straight and anyways ripping out so perfectionism filming and i'm just slow so yeah i'm about halfway done i spent seven hours sewing this week i didn't get any other sewing done on any of the other days i was doing other things yesterday my husband took a half day off work and we went on a hike had dinner in the forest it was really nice um, so, and then here we are again. It's Thursday and it's time to film again. And so I'm about halfway done with that project. I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to finish it up this weekend. If I could do half last weekend, I can do half this weekend. So that's the update on that project and that's it. I really don't have anything else sewing related to talk about. No new fabric, no new patterns don't really need any more projects. I haven't thought too much about what I want to be working on coming up here. I'm sort of sad that summer is ending and I'm sort of in denial that I probably should not be sewing anything else summer related and that I should probably start thinking about fall sewing. I'm sort of in denial. So I'm just gonna finish up what I have uh, going on here and then maybe start thinking about fall sewing. So because I don't have anything else sewing related to talk about, I thought I would do an update on my Make 9 for 2021. I made a video at the very end of last year uh, talking about my Make 9 and what I was gonna make for 2021. And so since it's August, it's a little bit more than halfway through the year. So I thought I would do some reflecting on 
what I've done and what I have to do or what I want to do coming up here for the rest of the year. So the whole idea for my Make 9 2021 was that I was going to only sew patterns and fabric that I had in my stash. So I went through all of them and I matched them up and this is kind of what I came up with. So let's take a little travel back in time to that video and see what we find because honestly, I can't even remember what's on my Make 9. I like could totally ignored it. Hello, internet people and welcome to Number one is Vogue 1680, and I'm going to make it out of this rayon chali. Check. So I started off the year with my Make 9, pro a few of my Make 9 projects. This was one of the first ones. It didn't come out great. I have a video about it. Uh, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's kind of big. It didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. Um, the design ended up being kind of it was a busy pattern with a busy design. And so I just feel like it's a very chaotic piece and it doesn't quite fit right. So I finished it. It was on my make nine and I did it, but I don't love it. If you are interested in making this pattern, I would recommend a pattern or a fabric that has less of a pattern, um, unless you're going for that maximalist, maximalist look. Um, I would choose something maybe a little simpler because there is a lot happening at the front. There's quite a bit of draping. There's like an extra, there's draping, there's the twist, and there's an extra panel on the front. Um, so it's just kind of a lot, I think, for a floral print. But actually, I don't know, looking at it in the camera, I really don't hate it. But like I said, it's too big. So I don't know, you'll have to, you'll have to figure it out on your own. But let me know if you have made this and you like it uh, or don't like it, let me know. Number two is Very Easy Vogue 9315. And I was very inspired by this striped version here because I chose this rayon chali to make it out of. Check. So I finished this also at the beginning of the year. The last one turned out too big. This one turned out too small. It's way too short. It's just too small. Maybe someday, maybe someday soon. But I really love this pattern and I love the sleeves and the big tie and I love the fabric and I really like how it turned out, but yeah, size not good. Um, you can see now where I've come to the decision to start muslining more because I have two projects that I started the year off with that did not really work out. So we are zero for two here. We're Butterick 6378 and it's this top here that I would like to do and the fabric is another rayon chali check again so I did finish this one also this was my third project of the year so I start off the year strong with my make nine um, and I really like this one and I actually do wear it uh, I think it came out really cute I really like the fabric I like the tie and the only thing I would change is the elastic at the elbows is a little tight um, but I kind of push it up and then it's fine. I ended up straightening out the hem instead of doing the high-low version or even the elastic, um, the elastic in it as well. I just uh, evened it out and I did the vents. This one definitely seems like my most successful one yet. So one out of three. <laughs> Number four is the Vogue 1708. And I really wanna make this cute romper here out of this cotton fabric. Okay, this next one, I don't think I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna make it this year. It's a summer romper. It's not gonna be summer anymore. I didn't get around to it. I still really like it, but uh, I think we're gonna have to save it for another time, maybe next summer. Number five, got this really nice Pendleton wool. And this pattern, which is uh, based on the original Pendleton 49er jacket, and they re-released the pattern a couple years ago. So I thought it'd be really nice to make um, this jacket out of this wool, probably very similar to this one. Okay, so no, that's a no. I have not made that pattern, and let me tell you the truth, I am absolutely terrified to cut into that fabric. It's Pendleton wool, I got it on, for a good deal, but I'm still, it feels really special to me and very precious and I don't want to mess it up. So actually it probably would be a good project to start thinking about uh, with fall coming up. I do still really love the fabric. I really love the colors in that plaid. 
Um, do I want to make it out of that pattern? I don't know. I just want like a really good, like, I want to make it into like a really nice like chore style jacket, kind of rugged workwear-esque uh, sort of situation. That's kind of my dream for it. So that remains to be seen. So number six is something a little bit different. Uh, my sister-in-law gave my mother-in-law a bunch of old saris and outfits that she didn't want anymore. And my mother-in-law knows that I sew, so she offered them up to me as fabric options. A lot of Indian outfits come unstitched when you buy them and then you take them to a tailor to get stitched in your size. I picked out a couple uh, pieces of that. My number six is going to be a the Sew Over It Frida blouse and I'm gonna be making it out of this fabric. So I'll show you. This is what the um, outfit was supposed to look like if you get it stitched up, but it basically just comes as fabric. So this project, I wanted to make sure that I took a second to think about it and be very mindful about the way I went about it because of cultural appropriation. So I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of cultural appropriation here, but I think it's important to be mindful of it, so that is what I'm attempting to do. Repurposing another culture's clothing for my own clothing can be considered controversial, so I wanted to make sure I did not overstep any bounds with it. My mother-in-law, who's Indian, assured me that it is just fabric, doesn't really have any significance. The uh, suggestion of how it could be constructed is a suggestion. It doesn't have any religious significance. It doesn't really have um, anything like that. It's just fabric and she said you can make it into whatever you want. It's fine. After thinking about it for myself, I came to that same conclusion and so that is what I've decided to do. I really do want to make this top. I think it'll come out really nice and I really love the print of it. So I think I want to get started making that um, for this fall before it gets too cold um, because it is quite sheer and so I think that should definitely be on my fall plans. Obviously if you have any other opinions about this or thoughts let me know. I'm open to that discussion. Number seven is going to be McCall 7946 and I was super inspired by all of the shirring this last summer and I really want to make a shirred top for this summer. I don't think I have enough fabric for a dress but I want to make a top out of this Kaufman Sevenberry cotton floral print. It's back. So I did end up making this one. I really like it. I rebought the fabric. We've talked about that very recently. We've talked about the making of this very recently. So I'll put up a card about that. We don't need to go into it here. I really like it. It came out a little small though. So it's actually at this point, not quite wearable. So um, maybe next summer, hopefully next summer. I went quite a bit off of the pattern, but I really like the pattern and I actually want to revisit it and kind of follow the instructions more specifically, but I love the shearing, I love the fabric, and um, I really like this one a lot. Number eight is going to be the Hey June Handmade Vero Beach Hoodie out of this fabric here. This is another Pendleton wool. that. So this is another one I haven't made yet, and I'm not sure I'm gonna make this one either. So I got this Pendleton wool at the same time as the other one and it also feels very precious and I don't want to mess it up. I know, I know. I'm not sure that I want to make it into the Vero Beach hoodie because I decided that the wool is kind of itchy and I think it's better as outerwear, like a light outerwear. Um, it is pretty thin and it's shirt weight. Um, it's like the shirt weight Pendleton. And so I think um, it's used in like their board shirts. So I think that actually might be kind of the way to go is to just make it in kind of maybe like a shacket situation instead of the beach hoodie. I feel like the beach hoodie, you definitely would need to wear something underneath it. Um, and that kind of defeats the purpose of the hoodie, I feel like. So maybe sort of a shacket situation, a shirt jacket combo would be better for it. This is the problem with the Make 9. I am so indecisive that I make these plans like eight months ago and then I just wanna scrap them by now. Like I wanna do something totally different. So I'm gonna have to come up with a new strategy for next year's Make 9. So obviously choosing very specific patterns and very specific fabrics isn't working for me. Last but not least, number nine is also something a little bit different. Every single year I enter a garment into the state fair to be judged. Last year, or this year, 2020, the state fair was canceled. So it all kind of depends on whether the 2021 state fair happens. But every year I enter a short party dress 
to the short party dress division and I've had third place twice and second place once and so I'm hoping to get first place before I move on to another division but basically if it happens I'm going to enter Vogue 1655 which is this out of this cobalt blue shantung. I already have it planned out. So this last one, I will not be making either. There is a fair this year, but I've decided not to enter it. So I'm not gonna make this dress. I think I'm definitely gonna save it to enter maybe next year's fair. So that is an update on my make nine. Looks like I have a grand total of four garments made, three garments to be determined, and two garments that I have decided not to make. I think Next year, I'm gonna have to come up with a different strategy for my Make 9 because choosing very specific projects doesn't work for me, too indecisive, change my mind too much. By the time I'm halfway done with the year, I'm on to something else, on to other projects. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a really good weekend. I hope you have some fun sewing plans for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.